Maestro. Dirty. Yes! Wow. This is cool. Let it go. How about you hold it? Oh. There's a lady in the waiting room. She got a man so this is a short that was originally a part of Talking Dirty with Maestro, but I couldn't wait any longer. So I hope you're okay with the program shift. All right, this for you. And for those who had to clean out the jet, I am sorry. I will make it up in the Christmas box that I leave for the crew. <laughs> okay. For this part, I want to talk about saving your life. What it means when you see a game going sideways. You're on the wrong end of a blowout, or maybe even the right end of a blowout. But specifically, I want to talk to the cats on the wrong end of a blowout. You got off to a slow start. The other team is up by 15 or 20. And all of a sudden, you start to feel some kind of way. This is what you do. Be a leader. Go out. Do something dirty. You know what I mean when I say dirty. Get an unexpected rebound. Take a charge. Fight for an offensive rebound and then just take the ball up strong to the rim. Whether you make the dunk or not is irrelevant. Just go up strong. Go up with attitude. Do something to infuse your team to let you know that we're still fighting this thing out. Don't be afraid to die for a steal. Don't be afraid to do the thing that doesn't show up on the stat line. To give your team a reason to realize, yo, we're still fighting in this. And more importantly, don't be afraid to go to your coach and say what you need. Don't tell them what to do. Tell them what you see. I talk about this all the time. But more importantly, in a moment like that, let your coach know, I'm still fighting. I know you're still fighting. Let's go fight. Because those are the things that get you over those humps. Those are the things or those are the moments that get you over the time of losing. Those are the things that get you over the time when things are not going well because you're able to pull yourself out of it. And do not be afraid to welcome those challenges. Because I will tell you, as a scout, as as a recruiter, as a coach, If I look up and I see a team getting blowed out and I see a head hanging down or someone walking through a play and sort of running through a play, or if I see someone just basically saying, yeah, it's over, whatever, or someone who says, well, it's over. I'm just going to get my points and not worry about it. You can't play for me. I don't care how good you think you are. I don't care how good your folks say you are. Why? Because I can't win with you as the person. And how do I know that? Because I know the second times get tough, you're going to get gone. I know the second that we need to pull together, you won't be there. And I know the second that we need to say we, you're going to say me. Learn that now, my fellow Sim World Preppers. Learn the value of being that team player. Learn the value of being that person to do whatever your team needs to do to win. I'm going to give you three standouts for me in that particular category. Gabe Pope, everybody calls him a defensive this and a defensive that. You know what he did? Add it to his game, an offensive ledger. Why? Because his team needed it. Never once did he complain. Never once did he say, I don't get enough attention for this. Never once did he crawl out to the media. I'm just going to do another podcast on that, by the way, saying, y'all don't give me my due. No, he did his job. I don't even have enough words to say how much respect I have for Gay Pope in this podcast. I just don't. Could play for me any day of the week. Corey Ams, someone else who plays his game. And I'm going to take you back with the history, a little history of me and Corey. I hope he remembers this. So I, used, I, I will do and start doing uh, my dirty, dirty stat line. And that's people who gets points, rebounds, assists, steals, and blocks all in, all in the game. So, so they're my show's dirty dirties. And I was doing the numbers. I did the initial podcast. This was last season. And I'd overlooked Corey. Corey didn't come at me nasty. He didn't come at me like, oh, bro, really? No. He said, wow, looking at that, I think I should be here, too. And that's exactly how he put it. And that's exactly how he took it. And I still feel bad for that because I and I had to show the evidence because, you know, my show's going to show receipts. I had to show I had his name down. I had the number of dirty, dirty games that he had. And I just basically just had to give a shout out and ask for forgiveness on that because I blew it. And he took it in stride. Now, was he calling out the media? No, 
He just basically said, look, wow, you know what? I think in my games, I have that too. He didn't make it like I was sliding him. He didn't make it like the media was sliding him. And I had truly made a mistake. He called me out on it respectfully as the way a classy person will do. And guess what? Boom. Got me right. Because what was really funny is even before that, he had been one of my favorite and still continues to be one of my favorite players that I see because I've watched his growth over the course of these last years. Ace money, poon coon, right on the money. And thirdly, Victor Ilgauskas. Yeah, my my dude. He has been second fiddle or third fiddle or no fiddle multiple years in a row on a team that had DJ Wagner, that got everyone's attention, a team that had Cooper Flagg, that got everyone's attention, and other players that got everyone's attention. And Vic just went out there, or she's like, Mr. Ogowskis, I don't mean to be disrespectful, goes out there every day, puts the hammer down, does what he does, and make it right. Straight up class, straight up on the money. Never once will you find him in the media saying, y'all don't talk about me, y'all don't give me my due, y'all don't give me my whatever. There's some other cats too. When they're going through bad, they don't say anything. When they're going through good, they don't say anything. They just go and do. But I wanted to give you those examples. And, you know, I'm going to give you a bonus one. My first article I ever wrote coming into SimWorld was on De'Aaron Cruz. And he's still one of my favorite players. And I saw all those people talking about how he stepped back. He's not doing this. He's not doing that. We expect it more. We expect it whatever. And not one single time do you see him snap back media dogging me out I don't get a chance never an I statement and you watch his games what does he do he puts in the work to get his teammates on top that's the kind of guy I'll sign any day of the week so understand something if you want to get the call out you want to get the shout out you go do your work but understand that you're being recognized no matter what and if you're the kind of player who needs the call out and needs the shout out guess what you don't need to be on my team and with my boys because I'm gonna fight for you And I know you're going to fight for me. And guess what we're going to do together? Everything, including win. Not just on the floor, but in life. Real, yo. Real. So hopefully this helps you out a little bit with something. Don't worry. Scouting is coming up. More stuff is coming up with Maestro. Let me know what you want to hear. I already hear you, Coach Pope. I already know. I already know what you want to get. So just just go on and stop texting me, all right? Just I'm going to change my number. That brother. Love him. Anyway, reach out to your boy. Holler at your boy. Let me know what you want to hear. Let me know what you want to think about. Let me know what you want to talk about. You know what's up. And remember, never let Jason Bourne borrow your car. Oh, wait, you want me to read? Thank you again for checking out the Maestro Sturdy Choice. Drop a tag below and give us a piece of your mind. The Maestro. Dirty. Shut